This is a MACE user's manual tutorial. It follows the sequence of the tutorial as written in the user manual. The user manual can be accessed from the MACE quick menu by selecting help and scrolling down to MACE user's manual. This will open the user manual as a PDF. Tutorial part two, building a simple mission. Now that you know your way around the MACE user interface, and know the basics of panning and scaling and zooming, we'll explore some of the other tabs on the main menu and build a simple mission. Start by selecting the Mission Builder tab on the main menu. Notice the Platform Selector box on the left-hand side of the screen. You can pin this Platform Selector box so that it doesn't disappear when you open other tabs on the MACE interface. Let's do this now by clicking the pin item in the top left-hand corner of the Platform Selector box. The Mission Builder tab allows you to find and select an entity or a group of entities that you can then add into your mission area. Use the Platform Selector that we've pinned on the left-hand side to select some entities and add them to our mission. We're going to start with the Generic Bomber. The fastest way to find the Generic Bomber is to type it into the search box at the bottom of the Platform Selector. You'll see that the platforms filter down so that eventually only the generic bomber remains in the list. We can now drag and drop it with the left mouse button into the mission area. You'll see that it appears on the map with a number of waypoints arranged in a line. Notice that the cursor remains in the platform add mode, a cross with a P next to it. I've cancelled out of the platform add mode by right clicking on the map. And the mouse pointer is returned to the default select tool. This generic bomber and all of its waypoints are now objects within the battle space that you can interact with. There are two sub-modes that can be enabled in the platform selector at the top next to that pin, the conditional platform add and the group add. Both can be independently enabled by clicking on the associated button at the top of the box. You actually don't have to enable them though because there's a keyboard shortcut. Holding down the control key while dragging and dropping a platform onto the map will enable the conditional add. Conditional add honors some user settings that are set in the system settings menu. Usually these are things like stripping the waypoints off the platform and setting the weapons posture to hold or setting the reaction posture to do nothing. If you want to enable these extended platform add capabilities, you would navigate to the view tab, system settings, options tab within the system settings and select the checkboxes that enable the described modes when adding platforms in the scenario. There are several ways to delete platforms. One way is to right click on the platform, go to selected and delete entities. We can click the group add icon or instead we can hold the alt key whilst dragging a platform into the scenario. In the group add platforms form, you can specify an arrangement for multiple platforms. These arrangements include many standard force disposition arrangements. We can add a group of generic fighters. The arrangement of the groups will be VIC, 20 nautical miles wide and 10 nautical miles deep. Each group is of strength two and in a formation of line abreast to the right. The arrangement and depiction of the platforms is shown on the map with black arrow placeholders so that you can quality assure their placement before adding. You can delete multiple platforms by doing a group select. We hold down the shift button whilst clicking and dragging the left mouse button over the platforms. We see that multiple platforms are selected by the small ellipses underneath the platforms. Another way to delete is to press the control button and then the delete button at the same time. The same menu comes up, we can click yes and all platforms are deleted. We'll now look at the platform properties. To do this, we right click on our platform and select properties from the context menu. The upper portion of the properties window reflects the current status of the selected platforms. Items in the status window are read only. The lower portion shows the editable properties. There is also a quick search window just below the properties title. That becomes very useful to quickly find and change data. We'll change the call sign of our bomber. Do this by scrolling down to the general group in the platform data, 
select and overtype the current call sign and press enter. I'll now search for the property root speed by typing it into the quick search box. I'll change the root speed of this aircraft to 480 knots by overtyping and pressing enter. Now we'll look at the waypoint properties. Right click on waypoint 3 to access the waypoint properties window. In the same way as we did on the platform properties, we will change the intended leg speed to 460 knots for waypoint 3. What this means is that the aircraft will now fly at 480 knots as we set in the platform properties window previously until it hits waypoint 3 and then it will slow to the leg speed of 460 knots until it reaches the next waypoint. When it hits the next waypoint, it will accelerate back to the root speed of 480 knots. If we want to set multiple waypoints to the same speed, in the waypoint properties, we can simply change the root speed on one of the waypoints, and all the following waypoints will change to that speed. For example, if we want the aircraft to fly at 460 knots from waypoints 5 to 8, we can adjust the value of the root speed at waypoint 5 and then change it again at waypoint 8. Once a MACE entity reaches its final waypoint, the entity will cycle back to its first waypoint and begin following its route once again. In this case, the aircraft will continue to fly at 480 knots once it came back around to waypoint 1. The exception to this rule is ground entities. When they reach their final waypoint, they will stop. But this behavior can be changed in their platform properties. Now that you know how to access property windows, the next step is learning how to move objects with your mouse. This is simply achieved with a normal left mouse button drag and drop with the added requirement that you hold down the control key during the drag. All mission objects in MACE that can be moved are moved in this manner. You can also use the properties window to reposition an entity or a waypoint by typing in an exact location in lat long or MGRS. We will move the generic bomber itself by using control and left mouse button to drag and drop it. The aircraft automatically rotates to face its first waypoint, whether you move the bomber or the waypoint. This is something that MACE does for entities during the mission build phase. During mission execution, the entity will change heading based on its physics-based aerodynamic model. Now we're going to add a surface-to-air missile site to our mission. MACE can simulate an entire integrated air defence system, including the underlying C3 networks. For now though, we're just going to add a single autonomous generic surface-to-air missile site. We will do this in a different way. We'll use the radial platform selector, which is located at the top of the platform selector box. Left mouse click on the radial button and move the mouse over and click IADS. Then move the mouse to the Auto SAM and left click. This applies a filter to our entity so that only the platforms that are in IADS roles and are autonomous will be shown. If you don't see anything, you may still have a term in the search string at the bottom of the platform selector. Just use the red cross to delete it and you should see the platforms filtered now. Now let's drag and drop the SAM onto the map. We'll use the snap to high point tool to place the SAM on the highest local point. The generic SAM appears as well as a red ring around the site. The ring represents the maximum kinematic range of the SAM's missile. So we have an aircraft and a SAM site. We've created our first simple 1v1 mission. The easiest way to understand which team our SAM site and bomber are on is by looking at the icon's colour. The SAM is on the red team because it has a red icon and the bomber is on the blue team and it has a blue icon. 
Any entity in MACE can either be on the red team, the blue team, the green team, which is neutral, or the beige team, which is unknown. This can be changed either at the edit phase or during runtime by using the platform properties window. When building a mission, you should periodically save your progress. MACE has two save actions. Save your mission by clicking the Save button on the File toolbar, the Save button on the Quick Access toolbar, or the BSI Quick drop-down button. Using either of the Save buttons, the mission is saved using the last known mission name. If the mission was new, i.e. it's never been saved before, the mission name will be New Mission. You can also save your mission using either of the Save As buttons. These can be accessed using the drop-down arrows on the Save buttons, or the dedicated Save As button on the BSI Quick Menu. When you use the Save As feature, a standard Windows file dialog will appear, and you'll be able to name your mission and select the folder in which to save the mission. Let's add two fighters. If you still have the IADS filter active on your radial button, click All to clear your IADS filter. You can type in Generic Fighter in the search box at the bottom of the platform selector, or you can find it yourself amongst the platforms and click and drag into the mission area. Note that the cursor has changed to a crosshair with a P on it. That indicates that you're in add platform mode. It will remain in this mode until you right click on the map to cancel the map action or explicitly choose another map action. Because we're still in add platform state, we can just move our mouse to another location and click there to add the second generic fighter. There's no need to go back to the platform selector and click it again. We saw a little earlier when I deleted that group of fighters that MACE can actually select whole groups of platforms. Make sure you have the Select tool activated. If in doubt, just right click in a clear area on the map to reset to the Select tool. Hold down the Shift key and drag a box around the platforms that you'd like to group. The rings appear beneath each of the aircraft, indicating that all three are now selected in MACE. The green ring indicates that the generic bomber is the primary selected platform, or the most recently clicked. The other platforms in the group have white rings to indicate that they're part of the group. Add and remove platforms from the group by holding the shift and clicking on the platforms icon. We'll deselect one of the fighters from the group and then reselect. If we open the platform properties window for any of the entities, it will list all the platforms selected in a tab format at the top of the box. Also select all entities in your mission of the same type by holding shift and double clicking on one of the entities. Once you have a group of entities selected, you can hold control and left click on the map to drag the group to a new location. This will allow you to store groups for later recall. You can store a group for later recall by first selecting the group, as we have done previously, and then pressing Control and one of the number keys 0 to 9. This will store the group at that position. This can be verified by looking in the MACE message window. To recall the group, press Alt and the group number. It will automatically show the selected entities on the map and also confirm that that group has been selected in the MACE message window. We are now going to build an integrated air defense system, which is a collection of sensors and weapons that communicate, sharing information to provide defense against airborne threats. A detailed description of each of the parts of the integrated air defense system is in the MACE user's manual. It's recommended to simplify your mission builder interface when building the IADS by using the radial button to filter to IADS platforms on the platform selector. Another convenient adjustment is to right mouse click over the platform selectors section bar and select the minimize all option. This will now present you with a clean view of all available platform categories that you can use within the IADS. These categories align with the descriptions outlined in the MACE user's manual. At least one sector operation center or SOC is required for the IADS to function. The SOC receives track information from linked early warning sites 
and assigns those tracks to acquisition or target tracking sites. Let's select and drag the SOC platform onto the mission area. At least one early warning site is required for your IADS to function. The SOC receives track information from linked early warning sites and assigns those tracks to acquisition and target tracking sites. And drag an EW radar onto your mission area. Now drag another EW radar onto the map. Note that MACE is automatically linking these sites in the IADS. The way this works is that EW and acquisition sites that are closest to the SOC are linked to the SOC. TTR and Heightfinder sites linked to the nearest acquisition site. That means that each site can have multiple children, but only one parent. Expand the acquisition radar section and add an acquisition site to the mission area. At least one acquisition site is required for the IADS to function. In general, you'll add an acquisition site for each non-autonomous target tracking radar or SAM that you add to your mission. Expand the target tracking fire control section and add a TTR radar to the mission area. The TTR radar will support target tracking for an available weapon system. Finally, add a TEL by expanding the launcher TEL section and dragging a TEL into the mission area. After completing these steps, we have successfully created a simple IADS that is capable of engaging targets. We'll add an additional SAM site to our IADS. When building an IADS, it is common to associate at least one acquisition radar for each target tracking radar or SAM site in the IADS. Rather than adding all of the components of a new SAM site individually, we can open the IADS SAM section and drag an aggregated SAM site onto the mission area. You can see that by adding an aggregated SAM site, multiple platforms have been added to the mission. From the View tab, we can enable or disable the aggregate view to display an aggregated SAM as a single icon or as multiple icons, one for each platform in the aggregate. The IADS is fully network connected. This is depicted by the red lines joining each of the sites within the IADS. To complete our IADS, we can add an autonomous surface to air missile site and a AAA site. If we open the autonomous SAM section and drag a SAM site onto the mission area, and we'll open the AAA section and drag a AAA site onto the mission area. Note that those last two sites are not connected to the IADS. These sites will still act as air defense assets, but will not coordinate directly with the assets in the IADS. We've now completed the tutorial as written in the MACE user's manual. You can save your mission for use in the next tutorial. We've included a version of this mission with your MACE mission files called Tutorial 3. It can be accessed in the C Users Public Documents MACE Missions folder. If you open this mission, you'll notice that the IADS has been repositioned onto the main island, and also there are some other Blue Force platforms that will be engaged by it. Thank you for taking the time to go through this tutorial with us.